Sadibe. Uh, a change for Virginia Tech. If you didn't see it quickly enough, Jalen Cohn, it's going to start. Uh, the freshman from Walkertown, North Carolina, his first start as a college player. And he came off of the last couple of games. He's been playing real well, Eric. You know, for those who saw that Syracuse game, he was the guy in the second half that brought them back and allowed Virginia Tech to get that win. Syracuse starts on offense. Syracuse, 10 and 7 on the year, 3 and 3 in ACC play. Inside play, and it results in a bucket, Sidibe. And one of the things about Dolajai that they have to have him on the floor because he's a big playmaker. I know that Hughes and Bayheim get a lot of attention for their shot making ability, but Bayheim is a guy that creates a lot of plays for Syracuse. Virginia Tech coming off a win Tuesday at Wake Forest. They've won three in a row. Their first shot of the game, up and good, P.J. Horn. Excellent three-point shooting team are the Virginia Tech Hokies. Average 10 made threes per game. That leads the ACC. Dolajai. Turn around a thing of beauty. A couple of paint points. Four points in the paint for Syracuse. And that's one of the things, again, that they're trying. I spoke with Jerry McNamara earlier. They're trying to get Dolajai to try to be more offensive-minded again. We talked about his playmaking skills. The first time being able to have an offense, uh, an assist on that, and the last time coming with a point. Nolly with the misfire. Syracuse the lead in the ball. Quick trigger, Beheim. While we have a moment, Brian Oliver, how about your keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer? Well, we talked about this is round two of a game that's going back and forth. And some of the things that I've taken away from the first game is that for Syracuse, Buddy Ball. You talked about the fact that Buddy Bayheim is a guy that you've got to guard him. And then for creating chaos on Virginia Tech, this is how they get their offense. They want to be able to stifle the offense from Syracuse and get out and run it. Cone thought about it. Chuck Crop down to seven. Nolly misfired a moment ago. Something's going to have to happen in a curry. Ball's loose. Nolly throws it towards the rim. Offensive rebound, Radford. Wow, that guy's 6'1", and he is a tremendous rebounder. Tyrese Radford averages close to seven rebounds per game. He's 6'1", folks, and it results in a bucket. And Eric, that's one of the ways you have to beat this Syracuse zone. You got to go inside. You can't fall for the trap. This is a very good three-point shooting team, Virginia Tech, but you got to attack inside, make them force inside, and then kick it out. Ball poked away. Beheim flustered. Has to give it up. Dolajai 30 feet away from the cup. Now the freshman guard, Gerard. One and done. Radford, another rebound. Nolly got clobbered. A couple different Syracuse Orange defenders with the whack. What a great ball movement by Virginia Tech. You go around, you force it inside, force them to get them an opportunity to get in. And again, we talk about getting the ball into Nolly, get him off started early. And one of the things that he struggled in that last game up at Syracuse. 18 points per game for Landers Nolly. Redshirt freshman. Catch and shoot three. Another three-pointer. This time it's Jalen Cohn. We had a chance to speak with Mike Young, and we talked about Jalen Cohn and the amount of confidence that he's playing with. And again, this is a guy that has amazing lift on his jump shot. Maybe the highest jumper of any shooter in the ACC. The thing of beauty. Beheim, coach's son. A couple of misfires from distance. He leads the ACC in three-pointers made with 62. Cohn looking for two in a row. You betcha. Jalen Cohn first start as a college player, and he has rewarded the Hokies. Hokies fans are excited. Timeout, Syracuse. The guy Jalen Cohn that we were talking about that gets up off the ground, knocking down two threes. Jim Beheim incensed. Having words with Borama Sidibe. Well, again, you talk about Virginia Tech and how they move the ball. You see Jalen Cohn being able to get to the corner, knocking down one. And again, we were saying this guy playing with a lot of confidence, teammates finding him, getting to that corner, the lift, knocking down another from the same spot. It is clear who uh, Jim Beheim is most angry with. 
So here's what I'll tell you is if you're Virginia Tech, you want to get out in transition. You don't want to give Syracuse a chance to set up that zone. The last two times, they were able to be able to get down. And one of the reasons that Bayheim is upset with Sadibe is that he let them know, you got to go out and get that guy. That last time, failing to be able to get out, giving him opportunity to get two threes. And a change. Quincy Guerrier comes into the game for the first time, replacing Sadibe. Guerrier, his first touch, forces it up and through. So all three field goals for Syracuse have come in the paint. And that's one of the things because with this smaller lineup that Virginia Tech has, you want to try to get the ball inside and put a lot of pressure on him right now doing a good job for Syracuse. Cone trying to split two defenders, draws contact. And you see right now, Gary A gets the ball against P.J. Horn. And this is a guy that's got tremendous athleticism getting there with no shot blocking on the floor. Syracuse doing a good job early of being able to get the ball and points in the paint. Virginia Tech has made three three-pointers. Syracuse has made three two-pointers. Four minutes into our first half. Nolly. Let's see if Elijah Hughes gets involved. He's been a non-factor. First quarter of our first half. There it is on cue. Hughes off the window. Well, the thing with Elijah Hughes is that he's athletic and strong. And he was able to bully this man to get down to the point. Again, he's a guy that can shoot it outside. But for Syracuse, doing a good job realizing, trying to attack the basket. Nice little mid-range shot. Nolly draws contact. Syracuse having a hard time defending without fouling. It's on Dolajai. We can see Bayheim getting in his guys. Tell him you got a stiff arm on the Syracuse Orange, and they also may have the best freshman in the ACC. Landers Nolly doing work. And he started out early. I thought that he got a lot of attention in the non-conference. Uh, this Virginia Tech team knocking off what was then number three Michigan State. And I think one of the things about his skill set, Eric, is his ability to make shots. I mean, this guy with his length can put the ball on the floor and knock it out behind the arc with ease. Change for Virginia Tech. Naheem Aline comes in. He replaces Jalen Cohn. This is Aline with the ball over to Radford. Aline, a freshman who has started a large chunk of the season for Virginia Tech. Beattie. Line drive, three-pointer off the mark. Rebounded by Dolajai. And if you're Syracuse, you'll live with that shot by Beattie. Not known for being a good three-point shooter. They want to try to get him behind that zone and get it inside so he can kick out to someone else and knock it down. All four field goals for Syracuse have come inside the arc. Here's Hughes. Deep three. Ball tapped around and another foul called on the orange. I've got my eyes on that matchup between Hughes and Radford. Radford only 6-1. But like you said earlier, plays far bigger than his size. He's a tough defender. That's already 14 fouls on Syracuse. Isaiah Wilkins comes into the game. Sophomore from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Nolly. You got to do more than pass east to west on this Syracuse zone. You got to try to get into those gaps, force to help and kick out. Three pointer up and down. Welcome to the game, Isaiah Wilkins. And, and pretty much how I said on cue, you saw that last time. That play was set up by Landers Dolly. Being able to get in, force the defense to have to converge in. Being able to get it out, Isaiah Wilkins knocking it down. Already four made threes for Virginia Tech. Dangerous pass poked away from Hughes, run down at midcourt. Hughes using that good frame, got deep in the paint, short-armed it, and we've got a foul this time against Virginia Tech. All on Wilkins. Where we got talked about with Syracuse, that zone. You, you saw the pick right there, forcing the help, getting it out to Isaiah Wilkins. If you're Virginia Tech, this is how you're going to beat this zone. Syracuse does a good job of being able to use their length, athleticism to be able to limit those jump shots. You don't want to have a lot of contested jump shots. Jalen Cohn and Hunter Couture into the game our first look at the freshman couture good outside shooter and a foul was it on the floor it is no basket two quick team fouls against virginia tech that foul called on nolly 
Syracuse makes a change. Howard Washington, junior guard from Buffalo, into the game. Washington will trigger the inbound. Beheim. Wow, this time down the floor, three fouls called on the Hokies. And you see the Hokie fans not happy with that. But one of the things about Buddy Beheim from last year to this year, I thought that he's done a good job of being able to work on putting the ball on the floor. Last year, I thought he was a guy that was more of a spot-up shooter when you had Tyus, Tyus Battle. But this year, doing a better job being aggressive, looking for a shot. Ball loose. And it's out of bounds. Stays with Syracuse. And that's Hokey basketball at its best. They're scrappy. They get on the floor. And again, a lot of times you say teams take on the personality of their coach. And this is a team that, like Mike Young, they were scrappy and they go at, get after you. Howard Washington rings the bell for the first time. Off the bench, two-pointer for Washington. All five field goals for Syracuse, the two-point variety. Here's Couture. Nolly. Wilkins the turnaround. You saw Wilkins flash in right line. I thought that he would have done a better job trying to get the ball into the corner to Nolly instead of the contested shot over Dolajai. Beheim, his first three-pointer, 63rd on the year. How about the quick release from Buddy Beheim? Again, this is a guy you don't, he doesn't need a lot of day out, daylight. Distance, if you get on him, you got to make sure that you get him quick and not let him get it up. Pass almost picked off. Syracuse seems a bit more aggressive with their 2-3 right now. Nolly hadn't been able to hit from distance. Beheim. Back-to-back -back buckets for number 35. And what allows him to be able to get that pull up is you got to honor the fact that he just knocked a three down in front of you in your face. And again, being able to get to it, and he's got 6'6 six, six frame where you got to be able to get over and it allows him to be able to pull up and knock that shot down. Virginia Tech playing from behind as we close in on the 12-minute mark of our first half. That'll be a kickball. Clock resets to 20. Uh, again, with Buddy Beheim, you see the penetration and then you kick out and knock it down. And then, again, you've got to be able to understand who your shooters are. Beheim is not a guy that you want to leave wide open, get him started. Nolly bottled up along that baseline, able to squeeze it over to Aline. Syracuse the lead in the ball. Beheim. Feeling it right now. Three straight field goals for the coach's son. It sounds like somebody looks like somebody's feeling it, Eric. And you saw last time being able to put the ball behind his back and get there and pull up, create that separation. That's not something I thought that he had in his bag. And talking with Jerry McNamara, something that he worked over over the summer trying to be better of getting the ball up the bounce. Cone. Wow. Just elevated on top of behind. You and I were talking. We saw him shooting earlier. I mean, the, the, the vertical that he has in the lift. For a guy that's 6'1", with a 6'6 guy challenger, he wasn't bothered by Beheim. Beheim out of control. That's an offensive foul. Well, again, 17-17, but Buddy Beheim is filling it today. He's saying, Coach, get me the ball. If he can't guard me, I am on fire. <laughs> we got a good one here in Blacksburg. Impressed with his ability to be able to get the ball and put it on the floor. You see a little bit of back and forth, a little contact. Buddy telling him, he's like, hey, get me the rock, baby. I am feeling it. I can't be guarded. And again, Syracuse off to a good start. A lot of it because Buddy Beheim is giving him a shot in the arm. Yeah, you talk about the three-point leaders in the ACC. We've got the top three in the game today. It's kind of odd that we see the Bayheim and Hughes are one and two. Yet when you flip it, Virginia Tech actually as a team leads the ACC in most made threes per game. They average 10. Well, Eric, when we started in the open, we talked about this is two teams that shoot the ball well from behind the arc. And then when you've got a guy, that, a guy in Jalen Cohn and Nolly on Virginia Tech and then Bayheim and then Hughes, then it's how they get their threes. It's very hard to get those threes up against the Syracuse zone. But then Bayheim with that 6-6. Six, six, uh, frame he's come out and been able to make some shots Virginia Tech with the basketball 
It's been a fairly well-played game. We only have one turnover in the game. That came just a moment ago on the offensive foul called on Beheim. Offensive rebound. Cone! Can't jump into that three. He's already made a pair. Washington running the point with Gerard sitting on the bench. This run has coincided with Washington coming into the game. Beheim has the last seven for Syracuse, make it the last nine. So here's what I'm going to tell you as a player. When you realize that you've got it going and you feel really in your mind that the guy can't guard you, you're going at him. And you can tell Buddy Beheim when he gets the ball, he's not looking to shoot a three. He's putting the ball on the floor and he's being aggressive, understanding there's no shot blocking on the Virginia Tech, uh, Virginia Tech uh, defense. Cone a floater. Thing of beauty. Tied at 19, Jalen Cohn, the true freshman, rewarding Mike Young for the first start of his college career. Hughes, the turnaround. Run down by Guerrier. Beheim, you're kidding. Oh Come on, baby. Come on. Bonnie Look Bell. at him. Look at him. He's selling. He's feeling. Go ahead, buddy. I see you. Hotter than a pepper sprout. <laughs> Syracuse leads by three. Couture catch and shoot. I think that Virginia Tech has fallen too much for the three points. See, Buddy throw it up. Oh, okay, my okay, Buddy. Buddy Come on, Bailey Buddy's like, hey. raging hot, like an inferno here in Blacksburg. He's got the last 15 for the Orange. Hotter than the peppers that Peter Piper ate, baby. He's <laughs> feeling it today. <laughs> Who would have thought? And if you see that, Buddy, again. Realize they create a little distance, knock it down. And again, when you're a player and you're feeling it, he couldn't wait. It was already up in his mind, running into it. My buddy Beheim off to a uh, scorching st uh, uh, start. Well, he's capable of this. Earlier this year, he had a 25-point second half in a game against Georgetown. You can watch 25 points and a half, you're doing something. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Mike Young is going to make a change right now because what they do is they've got Tyrese Radford on, land, on uh, Elijah Hughes. He's their guy. But right now, Buddy Bayheim has been the one. And so you've got to put somebody on him that's not going to allow him to get that three and force him to his left. You've seen all of his drives and shots. They have been going pull up, get to the basket. Got to cut off that dribble drive and make him go left. 17-5 run for the visitors from Central New York. Nolly dumps it over the corner. Wilkins back out to Radford. Kona thought. Nolly, high arcing three. He's had trouble. And so this is the trap that Virginia Tech fell into in game one. They just went east to west, east to west, and threw up threes. This is a good three-point shooting team. They were able to get some success, but being able to get the ball inside and then out. Right now, I think that what they're doing is that they're making it too easy for the Syracuse defenders because with that length, you're shooting contested shots. Something to keep in mind, Syracuse did have a big lead in the game against Virginia Tech uh, a week and a half ago, but it frittered away. Syracuse not a deep team. They only played six men. Beheim with a rare miss. That's and I think maybe playing six men at the Dome kind of cost them because they ran out of steam in the second half. Well, and that's where you saw where uh, Jalen Cohn went on that stretch in the, in the second half, and they went on that 17-2 uh, 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 win. Excuse me. Uh, run. Wilkins. One and done, had a point-blank look, just couldn't convert. Hughes, deep three. Beatty on the run out. Wilkins, interior pass poked away. Beheim first on the floor. Syracuse doing a good job of being able to limit Virginia Tech. Hughes thinks he's got a size mismatch. Beheim. Buddy Beheim have an afternoon. Already 18 points. That play set up by getting the ball inside Elijah Hughes on a smaller beady. Forced to double team, get it over. If you're if you're Virginia Tech, you don't leave Beheim. You let Washington knock down that shot. Another one and done as Wilkins the misfire. It's an important game for both clubs, particularly Syracuse. Three and three during the ACC play. Tied for fifth 
Washington. And that's a shot that if you're Virginia Tech, you want Washington to shoot. You want to get the ball out of Hughes's hands. Make sure you stay at home on Buddy Behan. Long two for Cone. Another one and done as Gary A, who came off the bench, has been a revelation. Every rebound he has owned. And that's what he gives to this team. He's a guy that's got a high energy. He's got a high motor. He's going to get rebounds, finish around the rim. Beheim. Yeah, Syracuse starting with Borama Sidibe, who was just berated by Beheim. Beheim had to call a timeout. We haven't seen Sidibe since. It's been nothing but Gary A, and it's coincided with the Syracuse run. Another rebound, Gary A. Virginia Tech has gone cold. That last time I did like the shot by Landers Nolly. If you're Syracuse, I'd like to see them put Hughes back on the post. Put him on the post, force them to help, swing the ball out. Right now, you're playing the Virginia Tech's hands by being going one-on-one. -on -one. Huge rebounding advantage for Syracuse. Hughes got inside and got whacked on the arm. We'll have free throws for the first time this afternoon. It has been all Buddy Beheim here been at Blackbird. all Buddy. A guy that tells you, hey, he's been able to come out of this game, get to the basket, and use his strength. And I like the fact that he's been super aggressive, attacking the rim, understanding that there's no one there that can block his shot. Earlier on, he's been that sole offense for Syracuse off to a hot start. Syracuse coming off a win on Wednesday, taking down Boston College in convincing fashion. Buddy Behan not doing his thing. He has already made seven shots from the field. 18 points, which is one fewer than what Virginia Tech has. We're at the 6-12 mark of the first half. I was talking before the game with uh, assistant coach Adrian Autry, and I asked, I said, what is it about him that seems like he's got a different kind of swag from this year, from last year? And he said, Brian, you know what it is? It's the work that he's put in. You know, we knew that he could shoot the ball, but he's put in the effort, and having a guy like Elijah Hughes there to take a lot of the responsibility gives him a lot of freedom. A couple of good-looking free throws for Hughes. All right, Virginia Tech looking to get the offense going. They started five out of nine from the field since they're two for 13. I still think that ball movement, get it inside out, attacking the gaps, is going to free up the opportunities for them to knock down some shots. Horn with the misfire, batted out. It'll stay with the home team. Naheem Aline back into the game for Virginia Tech. This is Aline with the ball. Interior pass, Beatty back out to Nolly. Locked away at the last moment, but Horn is fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. And again, one of the things you talk about this Virginia Tech offense is moving the ball. I thought this last possession, they did a really good job of being able to move it, move it, pump fake. And you saw that last time, Nolly being able to get it in to P.J. Horn. That's a big foul. It was called on Gary A., who's been a force since coming off the bench. He'll have to sit and be replaced by Sadibe. Two free throws for Horn. Now a word from Works Switch Driver. The Works Switch Driver. With two rotating chucks, you can switch between bits in a second and get projects done twice as fast. So Gary A sits. He's replaced by Sidibe. Let's see how he reacts after feeling the wrath of Coach Beheim. His first stint on the floor. Joseph Girard also back into the game to run the point. This is Gerard. Beheim. Interior pass. Sidibe. Nice set up by Buddy Beheim to get over to Sidibe. You have to honor him because, again, that last time he was able to get a lean on his backside, four step. Nice little drop off to Sidibe. Beatty. Nolly. Shot clock is down to seven and a steal. Gerard. First basket for Gerard and Virginia Tech reeling right now. Mike Young needs a timeout. 
His Hokies at one point had a significant lead up by seven, but that's long gone. They're now down by 14. And it's been the challenges by this defense for Syracuse that's created issues for Virginia Tech earlier. And I think that with that zone, they've got so much length out there, it's hard to get by. You try to move the ball back and forth that last time, getting in and out. Draw doing a good job of being able to anticipate that pass and turn defense into offense. 28-6 run. It's been all Buddy Beheim not only shooting the ball, but now passing the ball. Well, you saw being able to penetrate the last two times. He's getting to the basket, being able to finish. And then how about the steal coming up? Gerard finishing up. Syracuse being able to get a hold on his first half. Well, if you like your sweets, Brian Oliver, you come to the wrong place. <laughs> not a lot of turnovers in the building. I like that. Just one turnover aside. And here I was thinking I was going to have some <laughs> some nice chocolate before lunch there. You set me up. Nice little pump fake there. Yeah, yeah no turnovers here. Very few. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. Virginia Tech is tops in all of Division I basketball and fewest turnovers per game. Beattie got in tight, misfires. But that's a shot that, that Beattie's got to shoot. Uh, he may not feel comfortable with it. I thought he passed up one. You've got to force Syracuse to understand that there's a threat right there in the middle, and they have to converge and not just stand on guard at the three-point line. Dolajai finds Beheim. Beheim has Nolly on him. Dolajai knocked off his spot. Not much doing. Able to hit a turnaround, though. And that's not a shot that you would get from Dolajai last year. I think that he's made a concerted effort to be more offensive-minded, took his time, realized that he had a smaller guy on him, but he did a good job of being able to gather himself and finish. Cone, that's been the best offense for Virginia Tech so far in the first half. And that's been the guy that showed no fear being able to do it. And his ability to be able to knock shots, yes, gets them back in the game. It also will free up Landers Nolly. Cone has been a delight here for the fans at Castle Coliseum. His first collegiate start and making it pay off. Dolajai can't hit two in a row. One and done. Rebounded by Beatty. Here come the Hokies. Down a Baker's dozen, but maybe a little bit of momentum shifting. And again, that 2 3 zone just takes the life out of the offense for Virginia Tech. Cone, quicker than a hiccup. Along the baseline, Nolly. Give the assist to Cone. And again, Virginia Tech doing a better job of being able to get into the gaps of that zone. That last time penetration finished by Nolly. Under the three-minute mark of our first half. Hughes. Beheim. Gerard. Things starting to turn a little bit here for the home team. We've got a timeout on the floor. Virginia Tech down by 11, but maybe a glimmer of home. Cone doing a good job with a dump off to Landers Nolly. And again, Eric, they can throw back and back forth with the three-point line, but I think that they're going to do a better job of being able to get into the gaps. Right now, get the crowd into the game, able to claw their way back into it. Well, before that last timeout, we had a foul called against Syracuse, and it's the seventh team foul, which means Virginia Tech in the bonus. This will be a one-and-one one for P.J. Horn. Elijah Hughes up high, guarded by Radford. Backs him down. Had a size mismatch and just couldn't get it to the rim. And I think Virginia Tech so far has done a, a good job defending Elijah Hughes. Opportunity where you take advantage of getting into those lanes, into the, into the gaps like they did before. Nolly gets it inside. Radford bottled off. Shot clock below 10. Radford with the left hand. Dolajaya contested rebound. There have been two instances where Virginia Tech has non-shooters in that lane right there. At last time, Radford is not a shooter. Beatty is not a shooter. You've got to put somebody there that can hit that shot. If it's not going to be Nolly, put a P.J. Horn there and someone else can give you a bucket. Syracuse leads by 11. Beheim from the elbow spins out. Sidibe offensive rebound. 
Two shots, one possession for Beheim. Same result. I think since Celine has come into the game, he's been able to put a, a physical, phys more physical body on Buddy Beheim, not giving those easy looks. Already 13 shots for Beheim in the first half. Lefty three is good. Aline shot the arm for the home team. I will make two points. Radford, when he got the ball inside, that did help to help set up that shot. But he didn't even look at the basket. He got it in and got it out to Aline. But again, you've got to be able to get the ball inside and out. If you're going to give you a chance to get back in this game. Final minute of our first half. Hughes going nowhere. Had it ripped away. Hokies with the ball. They had a three on one. Results in a three-pointer. Nothing there. <laughs> If he had made that, it would have been a great shot. He didn't take advantage of the three-on-one. He should have gone in and gotten the easy bucket. Syracuse trying to get in that locker room. They had a big lead not that long ago. They were up by 16. It's now down to eight. Final half minute of our first half. Hughes walled off. Shot clock's off. Virginia Tech can hold for the final shot if they want to. Radford. Syracuse still got a chance. Hughes. Deep three. Almost hit it. Almost went in. So Syracuse at one point a 16-point lead on Virginia Tech. The Hokies go on an 8-0 run to close the half, and we have an eight-point game at the break. Jim Beheim, Syracuse Orange, 36. The Virginia Tech Hokies, 28. Big story here in Blacksburg has been the coach's son, Buddy Beheim. He fires up 18 shooting threes, including 0 for 5 today. Well, you see it in the first half. You see where he's getting his shots. A lot of times they've been able to get into, inside the middle of the lane. I would put him down there and give him some early looks. He's a guy that if you get him going, he'll feel a little bit of a rhythm. He hadn't gotten any type of momentum in that first half. Hokies start on offense, down by eight. They trailed Syracuse by six back on January 7th in Syracuse and came back to win that game. So and, all is not lost. And for me, the most important part of the second half is the first five minutes. Again, with a guy like Nolly, you gotta find and get him an easy bucket and get him going. Nolly has to take a deep three. Those are the type of shots he settled for in the first half. And you said he's settling for them. And I think that if they're going to win this game, they got to find better ways to get him quality shots, not shots at the end of the shot clock. Dolajai, the spin. He's been tough. And again, Eric, Syracuse started the first half being able to get points in the paint. I like that they came out and gave uh, Dolajai a, a touch in the paint. And he's proven that he can score if you give it to him down there. Those six points for Dolajai, second for the Orange, trailing Bayheim's 18. And if you watch this zone, when Beatty gets it, they're not even challenging him. I remember talking with Adrian Autry, and they emphasized, know your distance. Know who you have to get to, and don't get too far down. Again, shot clock down to one. Cone has to fire, got it off in time. Off the back of the iron, one-handed rebound, Dolajai. So two possessions with Nada going on for the Hokies. Gerard, freshman point guard, trying to set up Beheim. Beheim was hotter than Amarillo on August in the first half. Had a personal <laughs> 9 0 run at one point. Beheim, that's a tough chance. And if you've noticed, they coming into the second half, they've got Beatty on him, their best perimeter defender. Beatty! That would have been pennies from heaven. Not an elite shooter in any stretch. But the ball stays with the Hokies. Loose, poked away, picked up by Nolly. Interior pass, and Horn is fouled. Sidibe got him. And you see, how about the effort for Virginia Tech being able to get in there? Nice dump off. P.J. Horn going up, absorbing the contact. And if Virginia Tech is going to get back in this game, this is what they have to do. They've got to find ways to get into the middle of that zone. Here's a message from Myrtle Beach Golf Trail. Myrtle Beach Golf Trail, a new way to experience golf in Myrtle Beach. Visit MyrtleBeachGolfTrail.com. Virginia Tech making a change. Mike Young brings in Naheem Aleen, freshman guard, to replace Beatty. Maybe just trying to figure out some offense. Gerard. 
Soft floater for the freshman. Get out of Glens Falls, New York. And Gerard was relatively quiet in the first half. But again, he's a guy that I like that because he can create his own shot. Does an amazing job of being able to handle the ball. I want to see him at the free throw line. Best free throw shooter statistically in Division I. He has only missed two free throws in 48 attempts on the year. Hasn't made it to the line so far this afternoon. Radford got whacked. But that's on Sidibe. That's his third. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but that last time, being able to get the ball right there beneath the free throw line, especially with a guy like Radford that can finish around the rim, getting it to him, he finishes again, plays much bigger than his 6'1". Radford 66% at the stripe. Lefty from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Probably find a good party in Baton Rouge these days. <laughs> Especially these days. Uh, they've had some fun over the last uh, couple of weeks. That football team. Holy smokes. Tyrese Radford talk about how he plays bigger than his size. Uh, on the, the road win against Wake, he had a monster dunk on <laughs> Olivier Saar, one of the top shot blockers in the league. Syracuse leads by nine. Trying to avenge a loss at the Dome January 7th. And this is the guy for Syracuse I think needs to get going also. Elijah Hughes can put it off the bounce and get to the basket at will. And the official's a little quicker to the whistle here in our second half. Hughes will go to the line and shoot a pair. Radford calls for the foul. And the junior Hughes to the line where he shoots 78%. I think Elijah Hughes has really stepped up for the Syracuse team. You know, last year he had a guy in Tyus Battle that dominated and provided a lot of the scoring. But for Jim Beheim, his emergence earlier on in this year has been huge for them. Couple of that with Buddy Beheim and his ability to score. Two soft free throws for Hughes. Virginia Tech, they've won three games in a row. Good vibes started flowing with that win over Syracuse on the road. Most recently a win over Wake Forest in Winston-Salem. No look past Radford. Back out to Nolly. Corner three. Up and down. Naheem Ali. Nice offensive possession for Virginia Tech that last time. The ball went to paint into the paint two different times. You had to force the collapse that last time being able to get it to a lean. Gerard the turnaround. You can see why he scored so many points as a high school player. He is crafty with the basketball with a soft touch. And he's really methodical in how he gets. He's never really rushing. Handles the ball, gets in there, and nice little finish. Radford has it lip out. Beheim, first look of the second half. Same thing we saw in the first half. A triple for the coach's son. And that play was set up by Dolezal. They encouraged him to get the ball off the rebound, start the break that last time, being able to get it to Beheim. See if he gets going after this. Let's see if Virginia Tech panics a bit. Maybe not. Nolly, a three-pointer. Lead back down to 10. Nolly is one of those kind of scorers that, you know, he's a little streaky. He sees the ball go in. Amazing to see how he can get going. Wonder if that gets him off to a good start. Behind the defense, Nolly pokes it away. Sidibe. Beheim turns the corner. Dolajai out of control. Shuffle the shoes. Turnover for the Slovakian. We've talked talk about Buddy Beheim on ball. Well, again, I thought he came out and he was looking for a shot a little bit more. Being able to get in and his ability to be able to create some distance and finish in the paint. I thought that was one of the things, again, first five minutes, Syracuse being able to hold on to that lead. Virginia Tech trying to climb back in it, but you see Joe Girard, six points. Prolific scorer as a high school player. Averaged 21 points per game as an eighth grader. I didn't misspeak. As an eighth grader. That shows that was somebody getting buckets early. <laughs> Same high school as Jimmer Fredette, oh, by the way. Nolly can't make it two for two. Syracuse basketball. Like I said before, I don't root for much, but I want to see Gerard at the free throw line. Best free throw shooter in the nation as a true freshman. He's only missed a pair in 48 attempts. 
Hughes got a friendly roll. You think he was at home. And if you're Virginia Tech, you can't give Elijah Hughes an opportunity to get three bounces and, and shoot that close to the rim. Someone's got to come over and get the ball out of the, out of his hands and force a pass. You can't allow him to be able to play buddy ball, uh, excuse me, bully ball down there. <laughs> We've seen some form of that buddy ball. Buddy Beheim with 21 points. Again, just slow offense for the home team. Pennies from heaven. Beatty with just his seventh three-pointer of the year. And I like the fact that what Visa Beatty realizes, hey, they're backing off me. I've got to go ahead and have confidence and knock one down. Understanding he's not that much of a big threat. Good knockdown shot from Beatty. Syracuse has it subbed here in the second half. This is Hughes. Tapped off the rim by Dolajai. Finally cleared by Horn. Horn, Beatty, Radford, Nolly. And Aline, the five on the floor for Virginia Tech. Dump down, Radford. Oh, fans thought it was a goaltend, somehow clean by Sidibe. And I can't lie with you until I, I, I don't disagree with them. I thought that, that that was a missed call right there. Syracuse may have gotten away from one. And now Virginia Tech gets the ball back. No harm done. A foul called on Sidibe. And, and again, it's a good thing that I'm sitting next to you because here I am ah. thinking... That might be a missed opportunity you see right there. That's Sidibe, close. Sidibe, Sidibe is a good shot blocker, but I'm going to tell you, I thought that we may, uh, and again, this officiating crew, they are they are top notch. I think they may have let one slip by him. Well, Sidibe has to sit. He just picked up his fourth foul. Uh, he's replaced by Quincy Garrier, who was a revelation in the first half, but did pick up three fouls. So Syracuse in a bit of trouble with their bigs. Hunter Couture into the game for the first time in the second half. Aline lefty jumper. If I'm Mike Young, I emphasize to my guys that, hey, inside out, last few possessions, we've been able to get it in and be able to get something, something successful. Syracuse lead down to six. And a bodying foul called. And now a little dust up. Wow, the freshman. A little bit of how you do between Beatty and Gerard. And again, Gerard is one of those guys that's not going to back down. Reminds me a lot of assistant coach Jerry McNamara over there. Got a little swag and plays with a chip on his shoulder. You see right now the penetrating, getting wrapped up, coming right at you. And you see a little back and forth. You know, that's some gumption right there for uh, the freshman, Gerard. And, you know, because Beatty is built like a little fire hydrant. And Beatty's been around the block. He's a junior. He's got experience in this great conference. All right. Cooler heads prevail. Foul is called on Beatty. It stays with Syracuse. Gerard trying to get his. Forced up the shot. I think maybe Beatty getting in his head a bit. Well, he, he looked over at Jim Beheim and said, hey, that was my bad. Rare turnover for Virginia Tech. Gerard, Hughes, Beheim, Garrier, Dolajai, the five on the floor for Syracuse. Beheim off the window. So I love how the way that Buddy Beheim realized that he had Couture on him, realizing that, hey, I just need to be able to create a little distance, took his time, a nice little crossover again, getting to the rack for the finish. Wilkins and Nolly playing keep away. Beatty, very patient jumper. But have you noticed as of late Virginia Tech and how they've been able to get those baskets, getting the ball inside? That last time, Beatty gets a shot. The time before that, inside out for that lean three. Gary A. 
And a foul called on Wilkins. That's the third on Isaiah Wilkins. How about on the floor? Eric, we've been talking about Buddy, his ability to get to the cut. A little crossover, finishing up. We got a good meeting in our second half. Take a look at the ECC standings with about a month and a half remaining uh, during the regular year. And this is the middle part, excluding the top three teams. This is the guts of the conference right now. Yeah, we talked earlier about the matchups. Obviously, what we have here between Virginia Tech and Syracuse. Georgia Tech and Virginia uh, playing that Georgia Tech team. Hey, I'm going to tell you, if they can get over 50, they got a shot because Virginia has proven that they had some issues this year with being able to score. And then earlier, we talked also about that Clemson and North Carolina State. North Carolina State going for the trifecta if they could beat. <laughs> beat I'm assuming Clemson, Clemson going yep. for the, no, uh, the trifecta if they beat North Carolina State. Foul called on Radford trying to body up on Bayheim. Yeah, Syracuse currently. Uh, in fifth place in the ACC, Dolajai up and through. Fifth place is actually pretty good for what Syracuse normally does in ACC play. Last five seasons, eighth, ninth, seventh, tenth, and sixth in ACC conference play. Mediocre. Lefty jumper up and through. Aline hits a three. He has been the truth in the second half. And Aline has been that guy that's come off of the bench for Mike Young and given them a shot on a shot in the arm. Landers Nolly hasn't been his typical self. Uh, Aline has given them a, a big boost. How about 12 points off the pine? Aggressive defense being played by Beatty on Hughes and finally a whistle. Second foul on Beatty. Beatty's got that great body and he was using it six feet 200 pounds and muscle on top of muscle and he may not be the score but he's a guy that is going to be a pit bull for your own defense get everyone in the offense balls turned over went right through the fingers of Gerard who has to foul in desperation and talking with Mike Young, I asked him, I said, hey, Coach, what is it about, you, that, about your team that you love so much? He said, my guys are tough, Brian. You know what? They're going to fight back, and you see. They're a scrappy bunch. They're going to play defense, and you see right now. Couture being able to fight with it, get into the basket, and this is going to get them back into the game. We talked about handling the zone, but their ability to be able to create a little bit more chaos. Syracuse, up until now, has done a good job not allowing that to be a problem for them. Mike Young's Hokies with five team fouls here in the second half. Syracuse, they've committed four team fouls. The bonus is seven. Nolly. Got it. Big three, second of the half for Nolly. And here's the thing about him, and being 6'8", he can shoot over smaller guards. Right now, the Virginia Tech Hokie fans letting him hear it. Hokies have made six of nine three-pointers here in the second half. Momentum has swung. Their turnover for Virginia Tech, just their fourth of the game. Interesting scene with Jalen Cohn back on the on the floor. How does that help them? Because this is a guy that he, sure, he, he goes after his shots. When I say that, he's going and he's running hard to get to a spot. Cohn's going to be a big-time player. He looks the part. Hughes and one opportunity and how many times have we seen this from Syracuse being able to get the much taller Elijah Hughes down there and Virginia Tech you got to send somebody you see right now one two three four five and then getting in and using his strength and height to be able to go for the and one it's gonna be curious to see what the conditioning's like for Syracuse Hughes Bayheim. And Dolajai have played every minute of the game so far. And they keep it up. Leading by four. Final nine minutes of regulation. Beatty. Easy bucket. And if you're with BC Beatty, you got to take that shot. They're not coming up to play you. That's a shot that he's proven that he can hit. That will open up opportunities for Virginia Tech to get those threes off and he can continue to hit those shots. Washington turns the corner with the left hand. Can't get it. Here comes Virginia Tech down a pair. Virginia Tech, you want to get something in transition. Not allow Syracuse to set up that zone. Deflected, picked off, back-to-back -back turnovers. And Eric, this is where Syracuse is so good because they've got guys in Hughes and Bayheim Dolajai that are so long, and they're able to get those deflections. 
Hughes walled off, settles for the 12-footer, hits it. And that's a bucket getter. And you can tell by Elijah Hughes that he's never out of the game because he's going to give himself a chance. Being able to get inside, knock down the three that last time with a nice little pull-up Jake. First half, it was all Bayheim. Second half, it's Hughes, the main contributor. And Nolly's having a hard time finding the ball. He has turned it over three times in the last four possessions. You see that last time, Dolajai going down. Dolajai slow to his feet, and this is a official timeout as Dolajai needs to be looked at. And that last time, you know, he... And again, a guy like Elijah Hughes can go get a bucket at any time. We got a good one. Guys down there in the post and use his strength to get to the basket. And again, a good job of being able to fight for position, being very patient, taking his time and getting in close. And again, once you see the ball go in the hoop a couple of times, Eric Collins, you realize, hey, I'm feeling a little bit. Now I can get to my spot, create some separation and knock down that shot. And for Syracuse, very dangerous if Elijah Hughes gets going because he's a guy along with Buddy Bayheim that we'd be talking to, uh, talking about, creates a big problem for the defenders for Virginia Tech. It was behind the story offensively for Syracuse in the first half. Second half, it's been Hughes. Syracuse the lead in the ball. Up four, closing in on the seven-minute mark. Beheim. Nice elevation and scores on top of Aline. How impressive has he been today? Again, you know about the three-point shooting from Buddy Beheim, but it's been more impressed with his ability to put the ball on the floor and be able to hit that mid-range jumper. Virginia Tech has committed six team fouls. That means that the next time they foul, it'll be bonus free throws for Syracuse. Hokies down six. Traditionally, Virginia Tech has struggled when they don't have Landers Nolly on the floor. Again, still thinking they should have gone through and get that ball back in the middle. I find it interesting that Landers Nolly had played the first 32 minutes and 43 seconds, but now, of all times, he's sitting on the bench. And that's a veteran for you. <laughs> Nolly, just a freshman, but he heard his name called, and he streaked to the scorer's table. He was coming in right then and there. And trust me, for guys that are scorers and you're struggling, you want to get back in there and you, when the coach called his name. <laughs> again, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not putting one up in the next couple of possessions. Catch and shoot Cole to misfire. Rebounded Dolajai. I've actually had conversations with the greatest hokey of them all, Del Curry, and he says getting to the scorer's table is actually a skill. <laughs> the minute you hear your name, you got to get there. You can't waste any time. First whistle, you got to be the man in the game. And you don't want your coach to have a change of heart. <laughs> Syracuse leads by six. Behind. You still have a Bisa Beatty guarding Elijah Hughes. I would put put Beatty in the post, force them to have to help. Again, Beheim has been their offense. Nice little pass. Beatty finds by, Horn. Finds Horn. And Eric, what you've seen from Virginia Tech, this is a team that can shoot the three, but again, they've had some success being able to get the ball inside and attacking that zone. Garrier, score the goal, he's fouled! Oh, bonus buckets, Quincy Garrier. A bucket and a chance for a three-point play. And we were talking in the first half about Gary Ye and, and how much of an energy guy he is. You see, setting up the shot by a pump fake, going in with the finish. Gary Ye not known for being a, a, a great three-point shooter. That last time caught P.J. Horn. Your Horn, you got to stay at home on that one. Get out of Montreal, Quebec, three-point play. Makes the lead seven. Radford back into the game, replacing Beatty for Virginia Tech. Hokies have gotten close in the second half, but not close enough. They're in trouble. Five and a half remaining, down seven. Three-game winning streak on the line. Nolly straight on look. Bottom of the well! Again, the recipe for getting, getting buckets. Get the ball inside, force the defense to collapse, get it out to your shooter. Seems like a pretty good recipe for success for Virginia Tech. Hughes tries to answer. He does. <laughs> when you see a guy like Elijah Hughes, he says, okay, you know what? You've got a three. I'll answer that. It's going to come down to who can have the ball at the end and finish plays. Nolly, head and shoulder fake. Teardrop, waved it off, fouled before... 
of the reach-in variety on Howard Washington. Again, for Virginia Tech, you see the ball inside, forced to collapse, get it back out. And then back at you from uh, Elijah Woods said, okay, you know what? You're going to back off of me? You don't understand. You got to read the scouting, re scouting report and understand. You got to put a hand up on me. If not, I'm going to knock it down. I called the foul on Washington and Taxi on Bayheim. Radford. Late influence by Dolajai forces the miss. Well, lob that. I thought he missed uh, cutting P.J. Horn backside. Again, Virginia Tech doing a better job of being able to attack that zone. Syracuse in not much of a hurry. Why would they be? Up seven. Quarter three. Offensive rebound, Beheim, and he's fouled. Beheim, not much of a rebounder, but got a key one there, and he'll have free throws. Well, one of the things about Buddy Beheim is that he's active. You see he's in constant motion. That last time you see Gary with the shot, and then Beheim going fighting for the ball. And again, this guy is 6'6", and you've got a smaller Jalen Cone going up. Now a word from Bojangles. Say good morning and mean it with two hefty, zesty Bojangles sausage biscuits. It's bow time. Beheim exactly 80% as a free thrower. Has one more. Isaiah Wilkins back into the game. For Virginia Tech, he replaces Radford. He'll be the man roaming the middle offensively trying to beat this zone. Another turnover. Nolly has committed four turnovers all here in the second half. Okay, good rotation by Gary Yancey. Virginia Tech missed dodging a bullet there. I'm not sure if Aline got his hands on that one. We've got a timeout on the floor. Game summary brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. And one of the things that sticks out for Syracuse is the 30 points, paint, points in the paint. And then again, how about we talked about Buddy Beheim ties his career high with 26 points. I'm going to be a betting man and go out on the land and ledge and say that I think he passes that today. Uh, okay. Different styles of basketball. Syracuse has nine assists on 27 ba made baskets. That's one out of every three is assisted. While Virginia Tech has 19 assists on 20 made baskets. That's and, 95%. And what they've been able to do in the second half is get the ball inside and then kick it out. And that's allowed them to be able to cut back into that lead. Virginia Tech forced to be patient against this zone. Wilkins back out. Cone, top of the key. Virginia Tech down by eight. Shot clock's down to ten. Wilkins, much needed bucket for the home team. And a guy, having a guy like Wilkins right there in the middle, I think that he can get that shot and win the battle between he and Dolajai because Dolajai still got to watch out for P.J. Orn cutting on the backside. I don't think Syracuse too upset about a bucket made after 25 seconds dipping off the shot clock. Washington. Loose picked up by Horn. I'd go back into to, uh, Wilkins. Sets up an opportunity for P.J. Horn on the backside. Again, Virginia Tech using a lot of time trying to figure out this zone. Aline. He has been magnificent. Five straight scored by the Hokies. It's a three-point game. Eric, Virginia Tech doing a better job of poking holes in that Syracuse defense. Realizing getting the ball inside that they've got to force somebody to come out. Last time, good read. Getting the ball to a lean. Syracuse being smart. Understands the clock is their friend. Take advantage of the shot clock. Hughes. Virginia Tech a chance to tie with a triple. You go back to what's been successful. Get the ball into the middle of the lane. Force the help. Get the ball out. Horn. One point game. Another assisted basket for Virginia Tech. And we've got a timeout. It's a one point game. Again, how many times have we talked in the second half of Virginia Tech to get back in this game? Get the ball inside. The one before, again, get the ball inside. Get it to Wilkins. You see the first time being able to dance around Dolajai, get off that shot. You get him again, allow him to get the ball out to a lean. 
And this final time, get the ball inside, and you force the help. Nice little dump off to P.J. Horn. Seven points by being able to poke holes in that zone. 7-0 run when it matters most for the home team. Virginia Tech now with 15 more three-pointers. Came in leading the ACC and made threes per game, averaging 10. They've done that five better. Now they need to stop defensively. Let's see what Syracuse draws up. It was all Bayheim in the first half. It's been all Hughes here in the second and half. So here's what I'll tell you. The good of the game is almost like a chess match. You go back and look back, and where's your advantage? I think with Elijah Hughes, you look back and you see who's guarding him. This last time, you got Isaiah Wilkes. That's not somebody that can guard Elijah Woods one-on-one. -on -one. You put the ball in his hands, and you allow him to go get a shot. All right, there's the matchup. Hughes attacking. Dolajai pushed off his spot. Still able to muscle out up and in. How many times have we talked about Dolajai and being able to finish inside? A good, good penetration by Hughes, forced to help getting the ball. A nice little finish by Dolajai. Aline rattles it through. One point game once again. Virginia. 17 points for Aline. Virginia Tech has got Syracuse on their heels with the zone because they found a weak point in being able to get the ball inside. And once you get them on their heels, doing a good job of being able to finish. Syracuse in the bonus. Hughes looking for something. Oh, wow. That is a big-time scorer. And that's a guy that recognizes that he can get to a spot. He knows that Isaiah Wilkins cannot stop him from getting to the basket. He's just got to get there and finish. Three-point game. Final minute. Nolly can't hit it, and there's a push in the back. Horn is fouled. That's only the sixth team foul on Syracuse, so no bonus yet. How about Elijah Hughes being able to take his time, understanding that all he has to do is get to a side and finish. He understands that there's not going to be any help. It's been rare that Virginia Tech has doubled him tonight, and he's been able to get his baskets when he needed them. Sixth team foul on Syracuse. So it's side out of bounds for Virginia Tech, down by a point. And with an official timeout, both teams are going to huddle and talk strategy. 68-67, Virginia Tech has the basketball. You know, we're being told that the score has been marked incorrect. It is 70-67. Now, our monitors match with what it says here on the scoreboard. It is a three-point game. That's what we thought. So a three-point game, 44 seconds remaining. The official timeout is over. Virginia Tech basketball, what's the thought process for Mike Young's team? I'm looking into my crystal ball. I'm going to tell you that you got to get the ball inside. They've had a lot of success of being able to get it inside, force them to help get someone in like Cone or Nolly for an open three. Aline, Nolly, Beatty, Cone in the ball game. Score it and a foul! Or you could give the ball to a BCB down low and I'll get him an and one opportunity. Smallest man on the floor. Score it and a foul. Chance to tie it at the line. And you see a lot of attention paying attention to the three-point shooter. But BCB is able to duck in there. Late rotation by Elijah Hughes. Big free throw. Talk about an out-of-bounds play. BD can't tie it. So still work to be done for Virginia Tech. Still a lead to protect for Syracuse. You Virginia Tech, you don't have to have to foul. You got you need a solid defensive stance. Again, you got the ball in your shot maker's hands. Jim Beheim opting to be able to call a timeout to get make sure he gets what he wants on offense. Difference game clock and shot clock is nine seconds. Syracuse burns a timeout, and they will talk about how they want to deal with this. Wow, who would have thought? After losing at home with the Syracuse Orange coming down here in a revenge game against the Hokies, and they have played very well through the first 39 minutes. While well, we have a moment, take a look at our both big moments, and it is about Buddy Beheim. And again, Buddy Beheim started off the game being able to come out knocking down shots, 
It wasn't just three-pointers, ladies and gentlemen. He was able to get to the basket. He's been super creative in his ability to be able to use that six, uh, six, 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 six frame to be able to get baskets. Today, he's been big for Syracuse. What's your thought process here? Is this Bayheim time, or you keep it in the hands of Hughes? I'm going to keep it in the hands of Hughes. He's realized that he's a guy that can get to the basket. If I'm Jim Bayheim, I draw up a play, allow him to be able to get to a spot, get some separation, and finish, and get a big back basket. All right, setting the scene for you. Syracuse is in the bonus. Should they get fouled, and even if it's a non-shooting foul, they'll have free throws, at least a one and one They do not have any timeouts remaining, though, Brian Oliver. So if things go sideways on this inbounds play, they can't draw up a new one. Yeah, and I think that you make sure that you've got whoever inbounding the ball is somebody that looks like it's going to be Elijah Hughes. I'd be careful to understand that you get the ball inside, he's going to run back and make sure he gets the ball in his hands. If you're with BC Beattie, you make sure that maybe you put the ball into Draw's hands and don't allow Hughes to get it back. Starts with the freshman Gerard. Shot clock's at nine. Hughes working against Radford has to settle. And it's a shot clock violation. It's a turnover. Virginia Tech has the ball. They have timeouts. They're down by a point. And it doesn't look like Mike Young wants to call a timeout just right now. They're going to add a little bit of time to the clock. We're hearing 10.3. And you see Syracuse opting to come out of the zone. They don't want to give Virginia Tech a run at the basket. Are you surprised that Virginia Tech's not calling a timeout? But I thought I saw Mike Young signal to his players to get the ball over half court and call a timeout. But I think for Syracuse, you're trying to extend and you want to take some time off the clock. Virginia Tech has reached the bonus. It's the one and one. So if there is a foul on Syracuse, the Hokies will shoot one and one at the line. Virginia Tech just missed a critical free throw a moment ago. It was Beattie trying to finish off a three-point play. All right, there's the timeout that Mike Young wanted. So still 7.4 remaining in the game. Virginia Tech with one timeout left. They'll inbound on their end of the floor. And if I'm Mike Young, I've got my shooters on the floor. I've got Couture. I've got uh, Land uh, Nolly. I've got, um, excuse me, Jalen Cohn. And this is a play that doesn't necessarily have to go to Nolly. You want a good shot. All right, still 7.4 remaining in our game, but this is uh, the first of a lot of basketball coming your way. Immediately following our game, you got the Clemson Tigers, maybe with more momentum than anyone else in the country. They're getting ready to take on the NC State Wolfpack. That game will be played in Raleigh. That brings us to our Toyota Tweet of the Week. This comes from Tim Beret, respected around the country. A win at NC State on Saturday would get Clemson the regular season series advantage over Duke, North Carolina, and NC State in the same season for the first time in history. And you saw the you showed the numbers on Amir Sims. Almost 23 points a game in the last two games. How big has he been for them? All right, let's focus on this one. 7.4 remaining. Your thoughts on what we may see out of Virginia Tech down by a point. Well, whatever they do, they've got to make it fast because, again, that Syracuse dome, you're going to have to make sure that you've got to shoot over it. I wouldn't launch up a three. I'd go inside out if I can. If not, it's got to be a penetration and a kick out for a hopeful of three for the win. Tyrese Radford is going to trigger the inbound. Virginia Tech has a timeout remaining. Nolly a deep three, well off the mark. Loose, picked up by Syracuse, and will come the other way and shoot free throws. Is that the play that was drawn up? Uh, it doesn't look like that was the one. It didn't seem like that was the best opportunity. Again, I thought that you've had success getting the ball inside. I would have liked to have that one pass over, pass inside. You see right now, Nolly passes over. I'd like to see to get the ball right there into, into uh, Radford, force the help, and then kick it out rather than a contested three. I'm sure Mike Young, that's not the play that he was hoping. Nolly hadn't had a particularly great shooting day. And to take it from that deep on the floor, with time remaining. All right, so we're going to have a one-and-one. 
for Syracuse. But before we do, Virginia Tech calls their last timeout. Marek Dolajai is at the free throw line for Syracuse. And there's not a lot of things that can go wrong for Syracuse now. I guess you could make two free throws, be up by three, and worry about a full court shot. Or you make the first and then miss the second and hope that Virginia Tech can't even get a shot off. I've always been a fan of making free throws. Dolajai is a 67% free throw shooter. And you've seen the Syracuse is pulled off. I'd see what happens after he shoots the first one. I mean, it's a one-on-one. -on -one, so one -on -one. I'd, I'd have him make it, but if he does, then realizes that that's the desperation he No timeout for Virginia Tech. The lead is now two. I can't imagine a world in which if he misses this free throw, Virginia Tech can get anything full court in a second. Nolly! And that'll do it. The Syracuse Orange come to Blacksburg, Virginia and win a thriller. Wow, Syracuse lost at home against Virginia Tech back on January 7th, but they come down here to Virginia Tech and they win for the 10th time in 15 all-time meetings between these two schools. Pretty impressive the way the Syracuse Orange were able to hold the fort when things looked dire. And they were able to hold off that Virginia Tech run when they came back. Thought it was a big big day from Buddy Beheim, Elijah Hughes big at the end. And how about the big contributions from Dolajai? I thought Merrick Dolajai, Dolajai did a good job for them today. Syracuse only plays seven men, but they still have enough gas in the tank to pull this one out at the end.